still play great music and is really revered, revered by people who older than me revere him. But if you ever tell them anything about any man nowadays, it is a different thing. But we have to separate it still. Because Dan Drummond used to make music to really advance the welfare of the whole human race. <laughs> the well-being. Even in a mad state. They make music to advance the well-being of the whole human race. Which we cannot say that for many of our artists today. We can't say that for many of the artists today. So it's not like we have put him in the same category, but we just say him did something that is deemed unlawful to the highest level. Unlawful to the highest level. But he is still recognized as one of the greatest musicians ever come out of Jamaica. This is the cutting edge of old school tonight. I want to say old school tonight. I talk about musical. We are talking about we are going back to the archives. You know, some tape. Long time we don't play a tape. Don't it? We're going to play a tape here tonight and we're going to give, well, we're supposed to have time still to play a speech delivered by Farrakhan. That's not old school. Just let that him do it. Him say it. But we're going to play a John Henry Clark tape. Long time, long, long time tape from Cutting Edge in the 90s. We're going to play a tape by John Henry Clark. And we're going to play this Farrakhan vibes. Uh. So, we can't say put your tape on cock like first time. We can't tape not about again. <laughs> but we know people get fit still. YouTube is, the, is where I go out there now. 10, 000, 10 million we're gone. You basically ask me how I know that. Well, I want to tell you basically say I don't even want you know. I tell you. And uh, him one, uh, you know them really saw, so. yeah, man. and spread far and wide, all over the world. And when we say all over the world now, we seriously mean all over the world. We're not talking about New York and London. We're talking about the world, seven different continent. The program reach. We're not exaggerate. We know that as a fact. Seven different continent. The program reach. And the people that respond to the program. We give thanks to that. This is the cutting edge on RFM. We want to play this show now to my brethren who got killed in a South Africa. Lucky Dube. So we want to play this show now in memory of Lucky Dube. A brethren who we come in contact with over the years and was murdered in Johannesburg in the country, South Africa. Where I told that when the man them here says him, them go gain themselves. Them never even know says him, them kill. Them two daughters, them up on the road, I perform extensively. Lucky do bear. South African youth who oh, do reggae. And go all over the world as one of the biggest reggae acts them in at the time when them did a perform. Serious thing. Him and Alpha Blande. I must say Alpha Blande before him, but Alpha Blande from Ivory Coast become one of the biggest reggae acts them. And Lucky Duba is one such big reggae act. So I would have said. The two biggest reggae acts that will come out of Africa is Alpha Blande and Lucky Dube. Yeah, this is the cutting edge. We are going through the pieces. You know, as we say, we are going to the archives tonight. Bring a lecture by John Henry Clark. And we also want to play this Farrakhan speech from the other day about Trump. <laughs> I may mean, tell you, say the world is spinning around, say the world is upside down. Joe Higgs' words. 
Okay, we'll continue the voice. Remember, say we have a feature. We we'll still have a call it the new feature. Pat Clark come in with our Jamaica roots and culture. And father's five minutes to 11. We have that. Meanwhile, in between time, we we'll continue the journey musically. So while ago we just mentioned the Ides of March, people might wonder what we are talking about, but today is the 15th of March, and this day, this day, according to the history, I was told I wasn't there. Them said Julius Caesar was murdered by him senators. I don't know how much people ever saw that movie, Julius Caesar. With Brutus and all them, man, they are stab him up, stab him right in you know, the Senate. You know, me and my brethren walk going to that place there, in you know, the forum. A, a forum, them call it, yes. Where the senators, them use, so make that is how democracy come out. Democracy come out right in that place there in a room. Me and, me and um, Desi, Desi, my drummer, we, we used to walk up and down after we have, we have half days. Couple, we have half days in Italy in a room there. And we decided so we're going to walk up and down, go to the Colosseum and all them places there, right there. In the forum, which part them say Julius Caesar was murdered on the 15th of March. It became known as the Ides of March, which is like supposed to be the beginning of the new month or beginning of the year. Yes, the new moon supposed to come out at that time according to the Julian, the Roman calendar. A lot of people don't know, say, they, in Ethiopia, them use the Julian calendar. Yeah, the Julian calendar is used in Ethiopia, it have 13 months. Well, it, it is said, I call to the historian them, that Julius Caesar was was killed, and this become now a kind of notorious day. The day get become notorious, because other things start to happen on that day, they too. But one of the main things them say happen on this day is the the murder of Julius Caesar by him senators. I mean, like, them just stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him. And just kill him. Julius Caesar, one of the great man them who didn't married. One of the Cleopatra them, I think. And that is really a weird thing because that son... From Julius Caesar and Cleopatra became one of the pharaohs of Egypt. There lies the disintegration. Well, it started to disintegrate when the Ixos them go in Egypt still. But the, in, the, 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 the dismantling of an empire was part of the part of the dismantling was when. The Roman Emperor and the Egyptian get together. Anyway, Julius Caesar was murdered, and them now have it the 15th of March, of the eyes of March. Just some European history there. Okay. We we'll continue, as we say, five minutes to 11, Pat Clark going to come in. And give you what we call Jamaican roots and culture. Welcome to Jamaican roots and culture. I'm Pat Clark. It's International Women's Month. We take this time to reflect on great Jamaican women. And so, we will look back on the life of one of Jamaica's brave black warrior queen, Nanny was a vibrant and energetic African girl who was taken to Jamaica as a slave along with her five brothers, Kojo, Akompong, Johnny, Kofi, and Kwao. They all came from the noble and powerful Ashanti tribe of West Africa. And like most Ashanti women, Nani was well-trained as a warrior. Nani hated the severe cruelty that was being meted out to the female slaves. In Africa, where she came from, women were treated with respect. But the system of slavery robbed African women of their dignity. They could not choose the men they wanted to father their children. In many instances, they bore children as a result of rape. 
Not long after arriving in Jamaica, Nanny and her five brothers escaped from the estate on which they had been placed and they chose to live in different parts of the island. Kojo went to St. James, Akompong went to St. Elizabeth and Nanny and Kwao went to Portland. Nanny was made leader of the Blue Mountain Rebel Town Maroons in 1720. The town was renamed Nanny Town and the Maroons in Nanny Town cleared over 600 acres of land for cultivation. Nanny organized the Maroon Society in much the same way as an Ashanti tribe was organized back in Africa. To her people, Nanny was a tower of strength and an outstanding leader. Her skill in planning warfare came to be widely known and respected even by the British as their troops were unable to penetrate the intricate defense system she had weaved around Nanny Town. Nanny Town was built on a ridge in the Blue Mountains overlooking the Stony River. There were guards at several lookout points and they blew their abeng to alert the warriors if unwelcome visitors were seen. For more than 50 years, Nanny led over 800 Maroons. Not only was she a military leader, she was also a spiritual leader. Nanny was a wise woman of the town, passing down legends, customs, music and songs. She instilled in her followers confidence and pride in their cultural heritage. Her influence had such a strong hold on the Maroons that it seemed almost supernatural. Among the tales passed down about Nanny is the one in which she's alleged to have used her buttocks to catch bullets fired by British soldiers. The British were only able to capture Nanny Town by using cannons. In 1734, Captain Studdard and his troops bombed Nanny Town, claiming afterwards that all the Maroons were killed. But that was not true. Nanny and some of her followers escaped and made a new hideout near Rio Grande. It is said that Nanny prayed night and day for guidance and strength in those difficult days. Although the British wanted peace, Nanny refused to sign a peace treaty. She took an oath that she would fight the raiding British parties to the end. In 1739, although Nanny refused to sign the peace treaty, she did sign a truce. This is because her people had become tired of war and wanted peace. History records stories about other women who were Maroon leaders at about the same time as Nanny. Nevertheless, these stories mentioned Nanny as the most outstanding leader. Her courage inspired her people to maintain the spirit of freedom and independence. In the 1750s, this courageous soul laid down her mantle and was buried in Maroon Town. Nanny was made a national heroine of Jamaica in 1975. And now to end Jamaican roots and culture, here is our famous quotation from the Black Diaspora. I started with this idea in my head. There's two things I've got a right to, death and liberty. The words of Harriet Tubman. For Jamaican Roots and Culture, I'm Pat Clark. Uh, give thanks to Pat Clark. We really do that for the program exclusively. Yes, special feature Jamaica rules and culture. Yes, as we tell you, so we go back in the archives and draw out some of the tape them uh, make culture be exempt or put aside differently as a different kind of program. We used to play enough, enough tapes by different African scholars. And this is one of them, John Henry Clark, African scholar, John Henry Clark. Here we go. Listen carefully. It's creating lecture topics for me faster than I can lecture. 
The world is changing in our favor, and we don't seem to know it. We're losing some ground and don't know why we are losing it. We're gaining ground and don't know how to consolidate it. We have gone away from the subject for tonight. We have lost the art and the drive to be an African people. And you cannot be another people and rescue yourself while imitating another people. You have to understand what happened to you as you entered what Professor Van Sertema refers to as the 500-year room. The European, as I have said before, not only began to colonize the world, he began to colonize information about the world. He began to control images. But the most successful thing he did from his point of view, and the most tragic thing he did from his point of view, he colonized the image of God. And he started you on a tragic journey where so many of us worship everything white from a white God to white bread. For many of us get a picture fixed in our mind for we worship white Jesus over the weekend and plead to a white boss for economic survival the rest of the week and wonder why we lack respect for our black father our black lover our black uncle if he changed the images around to show himself in power and got people imitating him, then you cannot be your African self because you've been transformed into someone else's culture container and you are reacting to being away from the culture that produced you in the first place. And you don't look back enough in Africa to understand that there were no rape cases in Africa. No teenage pregnancy in Africa. No prostitution in Africa. And no African worship of God that the Africans did not sanction. The spirit of a people is reflected in their approach to salvation to a deity of their choosing. I am not talking about changing God. I'm talking about changing God concepts, changing approaches. If you go to Japan and look at Buddha, he's Japanese. Indonesia, he's Indonesia. China, he's Chinese. They're all Buddhists. But Buddha looks like the local people in each case. All right, now, let me seem to be talking away from the subject for a few minutes. Let's look at the case in China. Let's look at the case of the Chinese attack on African students calling them black devils. Then let's look at the case of the Chinese students confronting their own government and demanding democracy without understanding they got more democracy than the people they're imitating. Creating statutes of liberty, imitations of the statute of liberty, and quoting Abraham Lincoln, who was a racist, 
assuming that there's some democracy here without understanding how the nation was fashioned in this country for free white Protestant males, middle class and up, those who agree with the prevailing political status quo and who own property. When they said liberty and justice for all, that was the all. They didn't even mean white women. So if someone going to turn to America as their inspiration for democracy, they're turning to a bad example. On our way over, uh, we, Reverend Brown and I were discussing just democracy, and he, he picked out the case of the Chinese troops. The Chinese troops haven't shot anybody. And, and some of them, you know, refuse to hurt these kids. That's their cousins and their uncles and, and their nephews. They got some humanity. Over here, they're not still living hell out of you. <laughs> A state troop would take the butt of his gun and make you wish you'd never been born. <laughs> and he don't care about you being his cousin. He said, get the hell out of this park and you go get out of there. You put a, a bayonet in your behind. <laughs> they got more democracy in China than they will ever have over here. Now, are these people crazy? Have they read their own literature? Confucius had more to say about democracy and humanity and manhood and womanhood than Thomas Jefferson. Let them go back to their own, own writers. And what are people lose themselves and become so enthusiastic about things that belong to other people they become the captives of those other people and the Chinese are forgetting something not too many years ago there was a foreign settlement in China in Shanghai the Chinese could even touch a foreigner couldn't, the, the foreigners had their own police force, their own court. There were hotels in Shanghai where the only Chinese woman who could go into the hotel, the cleaning woman and a whore. And there were signs on the hotel saying Chinese and dogs not allowed. What in hell do they think they're talking about? They want American-style democracy. I don't want American-style democracy. I, I'm a trade for theirs with all its drawbacks. I would take any kind of democracy if it's on it. And this is the trap we're getting ourselves into. We think we can buy a piece of somebody else's pie. We don't know the cook who baked the pie. And we don't know the pie may be poison. Bake your own pie. Design your own government. Look at Africa. There's not a single African government in all Africa. And this is why the African Revolution went wrong. Not a single African government dare to come into being using African methodology, using an African system of government, going back into African history and seeing the African democratic form. Now let's go back and pick up an example. During the reign in ancient Ghana of a king called Ten Kameni, the lowest person in the kingdom could petition his king. He would petition through the council, and the council was duty-bound to take his complaint to the king. And if enough people of his status complained about the king, the council had to recommend the abdication of the king, and the king couldn't do about it. Could do nothing about it. 
This is a monarchy, and yet it was democratic. And this is why Ten Comedian was known as the king who rode out twice a day, every day. He would ride out among his people and administer justice. And anybody who wanted to talk to the king could approach the king and did not have to move from his presence until he was he, he was sure that justice had been done in his case. And he would ride out again in the evening in splendid regalia, dogs with gold collars, horses dressed better than the then kings of Europe, men of the mat, men with silk and brocade mats, just in case the horse want to take a nap to lay down the mat so the horse can rest a while. Splendor at its best, controlling the gold country, fabulously rich, and the people shared in the riches. The assumption is that a monarchy cannot also be democratic. When we go back and look at these African farms, we don't need to turn to the West for democratic farms. We had these farms. And we had communal living. Before someone invented communism, we had social living. Before someone invented socialism. But when it's coming from Europe, because of a European fascination, we think it has to be good because it came from them. We have not looked deeply at what was taken from us because we have not looked at the great river civilizations of Africa. Now, this is a great concern for a lot of people, but the cause of our number in the world and how we are dispersed in the world, we supposed to be winning. Some of the great wealth in the world is in our hands. 98% of the gold, the gem diamonds, comes out of Africa. The bulk of the gold comes out of Africa. Most of the cobalt comes out of Africa. Manganese out of Africa. Two-thirds of the copper in the world comes out of Africa. Great deal of the zinc and the lead in the world comes out of Africa. If we united African people all over the world, we could close down American industry. And if we develop a good agriculture as we had before, our people could be fed indefinitely and we could eat indefinitely and we could go to school indefinitely and say that if you don't want to pay my price for my goods, then I'll keep it. And they tell you, eat it. Is it we, we don't have to eat it. We got corn. We got pigs. We got everything. We got cattle. We got sheep. We got goats. Our people are going to eat whether we sell it or not. We're like a person in a card game who's got all the high cards and failed to put it, put the cards down. All right. Someone has sent me a book that they've been working on a number of years. I didn't think he'd quite bring it off. It's called Why We Lose. Jake Beeson of many so strategically located, why are we losing? And why are smaller people winning? And why are we losing in the face of that? And we need to ask some critical questions. But all the things in our hands, but all the resources we can that can be made available to us, why are we losing? I think we're looking at ourselves in the wrong way. And we're asking the wrong things from each other. Farrakhan wants a separate state in Africa. I said, please, no. We don't need another Liberia. <laughs> a sick nation where black Americans and Caribbeans went to say that they're going to civilize that heathen brother. We don't need no condescending attitude toward Africans abroad and Africans in Africa. 
If we return to Africa, we will return and walk the same streets for the Africans, go to the same school, fight the same battles, and cry over the same defeat. No separation between African people and African people any place in the world. It's not needed. And if you think you're going to have a separate state in the United States, you're dreaming because no white people are going to move aside and give you no state. You can, you can have a multiplicity of miniature states. Your community, you can make your community into a miniature state. And there are places in the rural south where most of the county is black. You can gain control of that county, gain control of these small cities. Now there are places where we can have a high degree of sovereignty, where we can practice for the kind of skills that we will take out to Africa. But the whole separate state where we can practice for the kind of skills that we will take out to Africa. But the whole separate state concept is impractical. We have to stop dissipating so much energy on impractical projects. Pair ourselves down to what is realizable. Now, before going back to the question, can we be an African people again? Let's define what an African people are, what they are, and let's define what happened to the Africanness of African people. And let's look at to what extent are we still an African people and don't seem to know it. Living in rural Alabama, in Georgia, and traveling in Africa, I've seen identical traits. I've seen cultural manifestations no different from one place than the other. And if you tell the black American he's doing something African, he won't hit you. And yet, through genetic transference, he still maintains so much that is Africa. What sustained Africa those many years before the foreign. What did he create within himself that he had a society where he not only had no jail, but no word in his vocabulary that meant jail? He created a system where man's function was to bring people in harmony with nature there are some aspects of it that may work for them. But our concept of consensus in talking that the, African, the European called Palava, uh, African Parliament, that proceeds, we need to look at that again. What can we draw from that? We need to look at our families again. And I need to look at my own family and when there was debates and my great-grandmother was alive and finally she would listen to the debates and then she would render an opinion based on it. If there was any dispute, all she had to do was to stand up and tap her cane on the floor, which means the court is over. The decision is in, no further conversation. She has said the wisest thing. She's given it all kind of thought. She said that listen patient to everybody's argument. She analyzed the argument and reached the decision. And that was our Supreme Court. And she was nearly always right. She was one of the great loves of my life because Anytime anybody wanted to punish me, she would say, send the boy to me. And I start laughing inside. 108 years old, how hard can she hit? <laughs> Felt more like hugging to me. 
<laughs> the whipping was of short duration, but the lecture would last the rest of the evening. <laughs> she would tell me the story. I think we have grown too much away from each other and we have not listened uh, to each other. We have not consulted farm that we created. I don't know who Robert is, who did it, Robert's Rules of Order. And if, if he's alive, and I hope I got enough sense to choke him when I find him. <laughs> he's for more meeting. Point of order, Mr. Chandler. Point of information, Mr. Chandler. I always is holding up something <laughs> where you can listen to consensus. The whole meeting will be over in a little while. Because the, the, the best thinkers among you will arrive at a consensus based on what's on the floor. And you'd have the best opinion you're going to get. All right, now, how did we lose being an African people in as much as, in spite of foreigners, we continue to be an African people all over the world until about the end of the 19th century. Outside of Africa, the most African place in the New World was the Caribbean islands and parts of Brazil. <coughs> How is it that 50 years later they become black English, black French, black Spaniards, black Dutch, and forgot about it. When they had brought off some of the most successful slave revolts in history based on the cohesiveness of their Africanness. How do we get it back? We can get it back by looking at what kind of success we had when we communicated one to the other. We should examine very critically what other people are saying about us. We should examine very critical the people who say that they are our friends when they are the people trying to take a community away from us. There are too many things happening in this city that we have not examined. We should examine the concept of planned shrinkage. A plan to drive the pool out of New York and make it the bedroom for the middle class. They don't want poor whites in the, in the city either. Poor whites won't even be able to pay the rent. Now, if a man makes sandwiches in a luncheonette, and he's good at it, why shouldn't he have a decent home? Why must he be some kind of an executive to get a decent place to stay? Now, in an African setting where the king was in charge of the distribution of goods and services, he would get a place commensurate with his needs, irrespective of his ability to pay. This was a form of socialism. And they did not call it socialism. They didn't call it anything. They just lived it out. And what did the Europeans do? Formulize it and dogmatize it and came back to sell you what you had in a much better form before you know they existed. And that's what is still happening. That's what's happening in our court. That's what's happening in relationship to the disintegration of our community. That's what's happening with the control of image. That's what's happening with the bad movies being made. That's what's happening with um, Spike Lee's misconception of the black college and the black uh, college president. It's happening because we are not controlling the image and we are not controlling 
the curricula, tolling the curricula. In New Orleans, speaking with two college presidents on the subject of the future of the predominantly black colleges, I said, I cannot speak on the future of the predominantly co black colleges because I don't know one predominantly black college. Right. Because I don't know one, I will address myself to what would a black college look like if it did come into being, if it dared to be black. What kind of curricula would it have? It would have what the students at Howard University were demanding, an Afrocentric curricula. It's a contradiction in turn for students at Howard to demand an Afrocentric curricula at a black school because at a black school, that's the only kind of curricula you should have. <laughs> at Brandeis and Yeshiva, you've got a Jewish-oriented curricula. They don't apologize for having it. They said, this is what it is. Now, they didn't say, don't come here. But say, if you come here, this is the curricula. We're not going to change it to suit you. Black schools should be good enough to train any student of any race and any religion in the country and still have a curricula that predominantly Harvard. Harvard was found as a Protestant school to train the future rulers of the United States. It's not going to change its curricula for anyone. It's going to remain. One of the Blyden brothers went to Harvard. And he's going to get a degree in political science. And they seem to remind him every day that Ralph Bunch was the last person who got a degree in political science. And that certain things are expected of you if you get a degree in political science at Harvard. And so they set him down his committee and he thought that because three of the members of the committee was his personal friends that he had it made. So they asked him, who is your political hero? He said, Parnell. It's man don't talk nonsense. Parnell, an Irish patriarch who blew a revolution chasing after some English. English woman. We will not give you a Ph.D. at Harvard if your hero failed in his mission. He must succeed in his mission even he had to step over his mother. He had to politically succeed in his mission. And so he thought about it and took some time off he came back, wrote the PhD thesis in 45 days, and asked, who's your hero? He said, Cromwell, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Cromwell chopped off a few heads <laughs> here and there, <laughs> killed the king, but he succeeded. He held England together <laughs> and just spilled a little blood here and there. But he didn't fail. He wanted business in England, so the Jews had been expelled from England. He brought them back. Now, this was a lesson. Is that Harvard is set up to train people who spoke a point and whose hero worshiping must be focused on people who succeeded no matter how and not dreamers who dreamed the dream and got stalled and blew the deal chasing after a lady. Now what I'm saying is that 
if you the Hamilton Institute, any institute, a black curriculum must have good courses in African history, not just a subject that allude to it. It must have good courses in African womanhood. It must show now that one of the main reasons why the status of women was so much different in Africa is that the Africans recognized early in life something which Western men still are not ready to re recognize. The duality of relationship and how he would have to put both of them together to create a single relationship. And then while the king is referred to in the masculine agenda, the king, in order to be total, had to have both the masculine and the female gender. And that you could not be a god without having a goddess. you only half of a god until you get a goddess. Now when you look back at how all of it started, when you go back 10,000 years, when you look at the status of the Europeans and all that ice, Caesar's a shawl. He's got a short time to harvest the crop. Four months, he's got to plant, harvest, and store. The wife must work. Every hand must work. If he tells, he gets angry with his wife and tells her to get out, she has to cop a plea to stay in because where is she going to go and all that ice? And she goes to another household, that's another mouth to feed. But she's not welcome there. So she was beholden to him from the beginning. And this is part of her psyche of being beholden to him. She was never free, and she's not free now. Only now she's a slave on an air-conditioned oxygen block. Okay, you look at Africa, where the women started agriculture. <coughs> the woman got tired of the man going on to hunt. <coughs> she began to plant garden. She began to have a food supply so close to the house. And when she said, where are you going? I'm going on hunt. No, we got enough food on. Stay on. <laughs> The forest was a drugstore. If you get ill, she can go into the forest and <coughs> find some plant that will cure him. She prepared the food. She took care of the children. And when you married her, you didn't marry an individual. You married a dynasty. When you wanted to marry her, you didn't consult her. You consulted the head of her family who called a council of the uncle then the females called a council then the other side met and both sides agreed then you could make the approach she's part of a totality if your cattle raiser each side gives Ten herd of cattle. The uncles give ten. So now, before they are married, they got thirty cows. Look at the mechanism put together. A lot of people feel ill at ease when I say that the romantic marriage is a Western at invention. The I love you marry. <laughs> It lasts through the season. Sometimes it lasts through the summer. It may be gone by the winter. I'm talking about I respect you, Matt. When you, you're putting together two families, sometimes two villages are coming together. Now suppose he get a knock on the head and get a little foolish and tell her to get out. 
She'd look at him like a fool and say, who's going to prepare your food? Who's going to take care of your children? Who's going to go to the forest and get something to cure you when you're sick? And besides that, she had to go out. There's plenty of places to go. She ain't got to go in no snow. <laughs> you see the independence from the beginning? And the independence did not mean dominance. It did not mean what, what, what white women live think it means. It did not mean what you are foolish enough to think it means. It did not mean that you got to declare war on him. The, matri the line came down through her side of the family. Matrilineal. The foreigners introduced patrilineal. Nearly all African societies are matrilineal. That means in most cases the king's son can never be king, but the king's sister's son can be king. Eliminating competition. There are exceptions. The Zulus are exceptions. They're, they're patrilineal. And yet in a patrilineal society like the Zulus, when Chaka, after the death of his mother, Nainda, when he uh, decreed that there be no crop planted for a year, people accepted that. There was enough meat and wild vegetables. They could survive a year without planting anything. No big deal. 15,000 men to guard the mother's grave for a year. No problem. So they go and guard the grave. And then he said, no he maimed the cow so that they could mourn for the passing of his mother. Nobody complained. Then he said, no cohabitation for a year. <laughs> the old ladies came together and said that our king is crazy. <laughs> he has outlawed life itself. We cannot continue as a people if he's going to stop this activity. The, this item would not be so important except that I'm showing you that in a patrilineal society where that is male-oriented, the female council had enough power to order the death of, the ceremonial death of the king. Before he goes up to the moon, he's going to communicate with the gods and the spirits to give him the sign. If you don't get the sign, he ain't gone. Is it all right with his God? Is it all right with his spiritual, with his spirituality? This can get confusing because a whole lot of people think the Africans created a religion. Don't ever charge this crime to the Africans. I'm using my words advisedly. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam have been turned into murder cults. Because once they emerged, they began to be used to justify the murder of other people. Christianity said if he's an infidel, he has no soul, and it's all right to murder him, it's all right to enslave him. Judaism said, if you're not of our faith, it's all right. Islam said, if you're not of our faith, we can put him to the sword. The Africans created an overall spirituality and a God of love. These foreigners who misunderstood African spirituality created gods of vengeance and created what I call a carbon copy of African spirituality. I am not less religious, I am more because I say examine the carbon copies and entertain the idea of going back to the original. I didn't say change God. 
I didn't say change churches. I said change concepts. Change approaches. Stay where you are. But look at it in a different way. Because the Africans created an overall spirituality for all life was under God, was a manifestation of God. And he did not have a weekend religion. He had a religion that was operational on his life every single day of the week. He did not have to build a temple with a whole massive space for praying because he could pray anywhere. Akhenaten, who is accused of giving the world monotheism, and that's not true, and the Jews who said they gave the world monotheism, and that's not true. Monotheism, the concept of the oneness of God, was here all along. Akhenaten never said he gave the world monotheism. All Akhenaten did was to deal with the corrupt priesthood of his day that was restricting the movement of people based on the fact that if you go in a certain area, you're not under the protection of God. Because I, I'm the one that controls the message of God. All Akhenaten said that God was omnipresent. God was omnipotent. God was everywhere. God was in the wind. If you want to pray, pray to the wind. God was in the tree. God was in a local, lowly cockroach. But most important, God was in you. You look inside of yourself. Now, if you look at what the Africans gave the world, and if you read W.E.B. Du Bois and James Baldwin, you will find essays on the duality of American black. Two souls in one body, two personalities. What the African gave the world is a form of duality. And when we look at duality, the African use conflict to solve conflict. He used conflict to horn one conflict against the other and to arrive at a synthesis between the two conflicts. So therefore, conflict did good because conflict presented him with the opportunity of arriving at a synthesis in between the two conflicts. Now, if you understand what I'm saying, you will understand that neither Du Bois or, or Booker T. Washington was wrong. And yet, the difference of opinion between Du Bois and Booker T. Washington gave us the opportunity to analyze both of them and arrive at a conclusion that will not be positively Booker or positively Du Bois. And that is called synthesis. A way of solving a problem by looking at both sides of the problem and extracting from both sides what you need to form a single solution. We have stopped doing this because we were forced into a society that was individual as against the society that produced us that was plural. When you come out of a plural society, you are tolerant of different opinions. There were many ways of worshiping in Africa. But the Africa knew one thing, for well, there were different ways of worshiping that there was one spiritual force for the universe. Different ways of approaching the spiritual force, but the spiritual force remained the same, for the concept and the approach varied from one culture to the other. 
Now, Western man thinks this is a conflict. And it is not a conflict. If we were ever African people again, we would understand that. And we would understand that you cannot lift an African people with the slave master's concept of a religion that was created out of your spirituality in the first place. Because he has a one-dimensional approach and you had a pluralistic approach to the same religion. Many ways of approaching it without changing the central message of the religion itself. What you've got to look at is something that frightens a lot of people and something some black people might want to kill you for doing. You've got to look at the Hebrew entry. When you look at the Hebrew entry and the mythology about that entry, you begin to understand something. They came from an individualistic society in Western Asia. They began to copy and individualize African folklore and to project it through their own understanding of culture as against the African understanding. And not knowing African rule of morality, they began to violate these rules and the African with his customary kindness towards strangers did not punish them for violating the rules. Because at this time, they began to violate women without any punishment and without any marriage. They began to produce. Now this is the historical origin of black teenage pregnancy. The farm. When I delivered a talk on it and didn't take the brothers to task, the ladies who invited me got a little angry. Now the brothers got a proper share of blame. But I wasn't discussing the present. I was discussing the historical origin. The foreign entry who did not understand the culture of Africa and had the African expel the foreigner for violating his rules, it would have been better But the African looked with some kind of toleration because the foreigner did not understand the rules, not knowing that the foreigner's children would start conflict between African and African that will last for 3,000 years and is not settled to this day. Once we understand how the mulatto problem almost destroyed the Haitian Revolution and why the same problem turned Jamaica into a sick political child. This is the cutting edge on RFM, may I tell you. I hope the listener them are listen keenly to where John Henry Clark are talking about the ascension to power of the slave master using our things and usurping it, make it become looking different from what we knew it was. I know most of us know hug it up and says our oh, things when we should be looking at the root rather than the branch very interesting analysis John Henry Clark is a man who can analyze things and put it into perspective so I hope you're listening this is the coaching edge the time is 12 o'clock you don't understand what I'm talking about. 
But there's certain things we sweep under the rug, but there's no more room under the rug now. <laughs> now we're going to have to turn back the rug and deal with it. Because we have to deal with a loyalty system. We cannot build a nation with any large number of people within the nation who have a question as to whether they are loyal to us or their father. Everybody in the house must be loyal to the house or get out of the house. Because this is a time of great emergency when our very existence is at stake. Now when you look at the Hebrew interest, 70 in numbers, and we're to believe that record that's recorded in the Bible, into 70 in numbers led by that, leave 600,000 in numbers, and leave because the Africans, with their customary kindness, Understand that they were collaborators with the first invaders of Africa called the Shepherd King. Instead of putting on the putting upon them and punishing them, the Africans said, if you are now ready to obey African law, now that the Africans are back in power, you may stay. Otherwise you have to go. The six hundred thousand were the ones who, who decided to go. But they had come, in, they come into Africa with no clear language, no clear religion, and no clear culture. And when they left, they had all three. Africa had made them a people. And they were never grateful to it. They never returned the favor. They never sent a thank you note. <coughs> they copied the African folklore. And they copied the meaning of the Bible from African books. <coughs> books that the Africans had created before. There was a book recently published called The Awakening Osiris. And this book deals with the, a simplified approach to African books written before the Bible. The most interesting, the one, only two I'll call to your attention. One is the book of Hunafa. That means the Paraphrase of Hunafa, written by somebody named Hunafa. <coughs> when the Egyptians say, we came from the headwaters of the Nile, near the mountain of the moon where the great god Happy dwells, as Kilimanjaro. It's significant because the ancient Egyptians identify their origin in spite of all the nonsense trying to make them white. They said in their literature where they came from. There's a whole library of books to prove it. This is why the, the book called the Papas of the Book of Hunava is important. and part of the Book of the Dead and uh, sometimes published separately. But there's another book we need to look at. That's the book of Kananu. Because there was a man, Kananu. I remember Asa Hilliard calling this to our attention. There was another man who thought they could get some money from him. And so Kananu was on his way to sell his product, farm product. So this man put his clothing down across the road. If Connor knew went around the clothes, you have to go through the man's cornfield so he could sue him for going through his cornfield. And if he went over the clothes, he would sue him for messing up his clothes. So Connor knew, went before the court and started defending himself. He defended himself so well saying what the king's supposed to do, what the councils want 
supposed to do. His rights as a human being. How he was wrong. And finally they told the king, the king said, keep him talking and write it down. Because he was laying down a law for the country <laughs> by saying what the country should be doing. He was laying down a law better than the country had. And so they took uh, his ranting and made it into law. This is the significance of a common man on his way to market and someone trying to find a way to do him in. And he goes before the court to plead his case. And his plea becomes part of the law of that day. These are the books that came long before the Bible. I am not saying you need not read the Bible. I'm saying except for these books, there would have been no Bible. I did not say choose one over the other. I said that both of them need attention. Thank you. Both of them need attention. And you need to pay attention to African problems of problem solving before something called European civil law entered that did not understand African methodology of problem solving. All right. The problem in Africa today in every single country is that you do not have an administration in Africa a single African country. Not one. You do not have a single African country that fashioned its government after a theory developed by Africans. You have an educated African running the country trying to develop parliamentary government that they took from the people who educated them without understanding that that same government is not working so well for the people who taught it to them. Democratic government is not working so well for the people who said they believed in democracy. And what you needed to do right now is to restore the African system of consultation where we arrive at a consensus. We can arrive at a consensus without a vote because once the main speakers have spoken, the council analyzed the best thought that has come forward, then arrive at a consensus based on what he what they have heard. This is what we call a a synthesis. He can't do everything that was asked of him, but they try to do the best that was asked of them using the most reasonable things that was being asked of them. And then the last blow when he said, what have I done to you, sons of my fathers? That was the last of the greatest warrior, one of the great natural warriors in human history. He was not murdered. You must make a distinction between murder and ceremonial death. This is a ceremonial death because the women assumed that he had violated the basic survival custom of the Zulu people. After him, the re-emergence of Africanness, one of his assassins became king, Ding Gong. And after Ding Gong, I'm tracing the, the real fight that started in South, in South Africa. Now the British pushed the Zulus and the Zulus pushed back. The British pushed the Boers and the Boers pushed the Zulus and the Zulus pushed back. And this started the physical struggle for Southern Africa. There had been wars before, 11, with the people called Hottentot and Bushmen. 
it's so well recorded and Fell's work and, and by the Zulu writer um, Thomas Mofalo and by the present day living Zulu writer Mazola Kamini and his work in Pachaka, the Zulu. And with some respect and Omar Cooper's work, the Zulu aftermath. And with some respect and but some misunderstanding, the book by Morris and Morris in America called The Washing of the Spears. The Zulu was the most recorded the, and the best recorded was in, um, in Africa. And the main thing that I'm trying to get at is that these Africans had not lost their Africanness. They were fighting in an African way. They were living in an African way. They had physical training in an African way. They were not this time imitating Europeans and falling into traps. It was not until early in the night, early in the 19th century, early in the 20th century, that African missionary trained Africans began to wear European clothes, develop European taste, and become Europeans in black faith. What we need to look at, we need to look at the end of the 19th century, all over Africa, when African people were losing their African nest. We need to look at it all over the world, but first Africa. In East Africa, the fight for Africa's soul between the Catholic, the Protestants, and the Arabs, fighting over the soul of Uganda. The white fathers, those the Catholics, had armed their converts. The Arabs had armed their converts, but the British had armed their converts better than the rest, so the British got the upper hand. And once the British got the upper hand, they won. But the British did not take away from Uganda the fact that Uganda has moved too far away from their Africanness. Uganda today is the most Catholic country in all Africa. And yet they maintain the four kingdoms that either man misunderstood had he understood them and ruled through them, he'd still be ruling Uganda. But the loss of the Africanness along the coast of East Africa, it had started with the coming of the Arabs who had no respect for the matrilineal system. And if you travel in Africa, in West Africa, and East Africa, notice that in East Africa, the men are mostly in charge of the marketplace. Notice in West Africa, the women are mostly in charge of the, Af the marketplace. Because the Arabs destroyed the concept of matrilineal, they installed the patrilineal, a form of male supremacy. While in West Africa, West Africa that was Islamized, was Islamized by Islamized blacks, who knew what part of the culture to leave alone. So they left alone the matrilineal system, though they were converted to Islam. Certain prerogatives they had before, they could maintain. And they could react to it. Now, the market women in West Africa have a court, have an entire society based on market women, the Sunday society. These are very powerful women. And many of them control large sums of money, and a few of them are millionaires. And every man, you go to Senegal, you see different men in the marketplace, nearly every man rents his confession from a woman. No man is out ranting that these women are ruling everything, they got all the money. Because he understands that the marketplace was a reserve for women. East Africa don't understand it because the Arab traders, being 
male chauvinists would not trade with women. It's a pity that the brothers who belong to the religion don't understand the religion and cannot accept, cannot separate Islam from Arabism. Once you separate Islam from Arabism, and once you deal with the statistics that there are probably 127 million Arabs in the world. Most of them live in Africa. There are more African Muslims than there are Arabs in the world. What am I saying? I'm saying that if you want to belong to the religion, in as much as you are the majority in numbers into the religion, why don't you seize it and be the caretakers of it and give it a direction over and above that of corrupt Arabism? I didn't say leave it. I said control it. I'm saying give it a concept that is distinctly yours. Muhammad Abdu Amadou Bambara in Senegal created a sect of Muslims that was anti-Arab. They don't even go to Mecca. So I would not go pray to an Arab dog. They have a mosque right there in Senegal. At, at Tuba. I'm not asking you to do this. I'm saying that certain Africans have imposed distinct Africanness on this religion to a point where they have made it African. I'm not saying change religion. I'm saying Africanize everything that's a part of your life. And everything, religion, politics, social fraternities, everything must become an instrument of your liberation or you must throw it into the ash can of history as wasting your time. <laughs> All people convert organizations into instruments of their liberation. While we out Pope the Pope and out Muhammad, Muhammad, we are Puritans, and we follow it as laid down by someone else without reading into it a concept that is distinctly ours and approaching it in a manner that is distinctly ours. As we look toward the 21st century, we don't have much time to waste. We don't have much time to get ready. If we're going to be an African people, we can't be dreaming all the time. If we, we need to stop talking about apartheid until we train some people to take over South Africa. I mean, don't tell me about apartheid. How many diamond cutters have you trained? How many mining engineers do you have? So you take over South Africa right now, all you have to do is turn it back over to white folks to rule. They mastered the mechanics of getting the stuff out of the ground. And you could have done that. How many students do we have at the Colorado School of Mines? We built airports for people in the United States. You mean to tell them we can build an airport in Africa? Now, blacks in charge of the harbor in New Orleans and in Newport News. You mean to tell them we can't go to Africa and be in charge of the harbor? I'm saying that to be African again is that Africa in Africa and Africa outside of Africa must draw on the strength and the talent of African people all over the world. We must have a pan-African agenda that goes beyond what religion you belong to and what fraternity and sorority you belong to. You really don't need to belong to any of them because the Greeks had no fraternities and sororities before they came in touch with Africa. And what fraternity and sorority you belong to. 
you really don't need to belong to any of them because the Greeks had no fraternities and sororities before they came in touch with African secret societies. Yes. John Henry Clark, man, may I tell you? I want people to listen because time and time again we step on this program and say, who say European logic is the logic that must define humanity? Because it seems that we who get caught in this Western civilization as is controlled and manipulated by Europeans, we feel that we have to see everything through their eyes. So our logic is defined not by our experience and our history, but our logic is defined by how Europeans view themselves and how them view we. And we internalize that and make it become our thing, which it is not. So when we hear about our God, our idea of God is defined by European logic, European religious beliefs and practices, without even understanding that it don't have to be like that. Because there are concepts of God that existed thousands of years before the Europeans set foot inside Africa. Africans were living a life. Good life too. And institutions. Governance. Thousands of years before the Europeans came to Africa. So what were the Africans doing that they could have survived thousands of years without any religious war? Religious war start when the invaders come in Africa. We, we who know the difference between what is enslavement and what is the slaver and who get enslaved must recognize that for our liberation, our freedom, we have to stop look through the European eyes to define with spirituality, especially with spirituality. Because our spirituality is what defines us as human beings. Our spirituality defines us as human beings. And if we continue to look through the eyes of our slave masters for our redemption, well... Just go and live the zombie life. But remember, remember, so many leaves is one tree, so many rivers is one sea. This is the cutting edge. Uh, reggae, reggae rising there, no stopping us now. May I tell you? My fat and white music gone at different level. You know, it looks like we're not going to play the Farrakhan, but we're going to take some call instead and play the Farrakhan maybe next week. Yes. Operator sending the call them. Cutting edge, yeah. Yeah, you're the motor. Yeah, blessed man. You know, so you have to talk a little more than the phone. Yeah, yeah, but you have to talk louder, man. Oh, yeah, you know better now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I love a duplicate. Duplicate. But we can't get it. But you know, YouTube are run everything now, so maybe think up on YouTube. A John Henry Clark, you know. Oh, oh. oh a John Henry Clark. Oh, which, one, you talk, which one of them you are talking about? The one where, the short one or the long one? Oh, I think I didn't continue, sir. I two different No, I'm letting you say I two different voice, man. Oh, oh, well, I did the long one. John Henry Clark, yeah, man. Everything, everything, I'll meet the on YouTube, too. So anything where you want to do, you go to YouTube, you see it. Oh, but, um, so, what happened? You can listen back to all the program and all, too. If you wait till Friday, I'll start today, it's a day to them put it up there. I see my, see my, I remember him. Yeah, 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 Eh? Huh? If thanks we are put forth. 
Yeah, man. Give thanks, Bridget. Give thanks. I can't pick up my Bridget. Yeah, man. Yeah, I pick up uh, my Bridget from New Albert. All right. Uh, Archiman, those are Archiger. Yeah. Big up yourself, Jeffrey. Blessed man, give thanks, yeah? I'm big up yourself, the most. I yeah. yeah. All right. Teen minutes to one, and we are raise up the ghost. <laughs> yes, ghost. Continue, yes. Yeah, yeah. Most, uh, Blessed man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man, blessed love. Um, What's the name of the last guy? Not John Henry Clark, but the... The Bridget, um, I remember him again. Somebody like Lumumba, you know, I can't remember the first name, you know. I can't remember his name, believe you me. I have to go look again, you know. I take it off and come, take it off and it's something a while ago. To put the music them on it. But, but I can't find it still. Yeah, my love for you, because I personally have a vibe, and I love it, you know. May I tell you, man, I may I tell you, powerful, powerful, powerful. Yeah, man, the man say, you, you, they must support Barcelona, you know, you know, Zebra, you and all them things there, you know? They, they don't say that, take over, all right, hey, even at Jamaica, yeah, I don't even matter about Manchester United and all them something there. They, they don't know nothing about African football and all them, really. Unless it's a World Cup. <laughs> Terrible, man. A real thing, man, because, yeah, man, I love the program, and you know, I always are tuning in, you know? Yeah, man, give thanks, Bridget. Yeah, man, man, but if you find out later on, just, Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, look for it again. Lock it down, you know? Yeah, all right, blessed. Blessed love, Mr. Baraka. Blessed man. Yeah, man. Need to get more of them to turn right the level more often. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man, too. African Eastern philosophy them. Some of them things are really more more often more regular upon people them will get more 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 overstanding and realization of their own personal individual self, you know. That's true, man. Look uh, I told the system around now it's really around here you learn your things that go on in more. Get to people, get to people, but I know, like, no, too much, too much. Look, look, it's honest, and what you could rub and I'm stuck to the bottom raster. Mm. That's the one I've done, no mercy again. Everything just gone, everything just gone, everything just gone, everything just gone, like, like, out of peer, 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 material things, no mercy, no one, everyone just a, just a hawk and, and rake and, Worse than a sharp thing. We need, we need, we need some more humility, Rasta, in you know, the liberty. And all it, you and I see now is to deal with our own personal individualness. No shorter. No shorter. But we have, have them things up front, first and foremost, for everything else. Yeah. So that we can have some, some, some humility, most, most. All about our sins. Yeah. We have to move, though. We have to move, though, Bridget. We have to move. I don't want to catch your voice. We have to move. We have to move. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, no, sir. You're blessed. You're my King James, you know? Yeah, where you know, man? Three, you man. Blessed, you know? Mm. We yeah. just said we have some bridges in California when we when we support with our YouTube and we last track of them. So, man, like, let me know more from the radio, from the year. Can we say we can do that? Yeah, go on, huh? Are you a normal no, man? Yeah, respect, man. In a combinium, the number 397-8981. Blessed. Yeah, all right. Mikey Dredd. Yeah, blessed, so, man. We are motor. You yeah. see me in my car about the devil. Yes. She said, honey, take me dancing. But they ended up by sleeping in a... Yes, yeah. Yes, blessed love, man. Yeah, blessed. The commercial, them, you want to reach with that some more. Yeah. That's so far but, I know. But if you remember, say, other people can't have yet to hear? Yeah, man, for real. Yeah. But yeah. oh, say, that's so far I know, so we love about this government and good people, them Rasta. Yeah, oh, man. What do you say, you prefer the other one? Um, I think, I think, come on, mercy. The other one. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, this one out. So what the friend, what the friend, that one I do know, make you say that one your words. All right. The tax, the taxation. Okay. For everything. Mm. Oh yeah. That, that everything just heavy. You know. And like, like them not have no, 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 no money, no balance. Them need to so balance. What do you think that for real? Them raise the GCT. Yeah, but we are we are we are too much pressure upon everything. Yeah. Yeah, man, them need balance things. I remember say what you know. No one have money like them. And are we, are we, are we still afraid to do everything towards, towards sending the money and towards fixing things the man towards the work and, and everything? You need to remember that, man. I remember say what you know. People are people, you know. I'm pressed about spice, you know. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking you should know them. People have to go places and people have to do things and people have to work hard. And the more hard people work, them still have to work harder. And some of the people them can't say, you know something what them are work for. Yeah, yeah. You know? Terrible. Six thousand dollars a week. Minimum wage. But I can buy. Six thousand dollars can't yeah, buy nothing. Six thousand dollars can't buy nothing. That make most of the pressure for the people them in the car can of send people them no out to work and at the same time they must take out people out of work and them and them now find out other work for the people mm. and all them 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 differently and all them things and them thing and them now still true to the people them. If you answer when, when I see them in the morning, I I can see the the, the lion even if not them face, you know. Yeah. See the mark of the beast and them ugly faces. Yeah, man. Let me 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 let you think to them, you think to them, you think to them, feel now we let them go to them bed, see them with your brethren and drink them liquor and laugh and talk, see them with them. You talk about it, I want to act on them. Them are dead as old age, them not dead for no heart attack, certain way, and sick. Them are going to just live, live, live out there. Them are going to resign and get money, said we. Yeah, we. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to move, though. We're going to move. Blessed love, man. Yeah, blessed love. I'm going to need to do something. I'm going to need to do better, man. Yeah, all right. Man, they raise up the GCT again. Yeah, Drew Plyon. Yes, TL. Yes, yes Mota Wagwan. Yes, continue. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, you know, so right now, I'm in my car, I'm in my yard, 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 I mean, I hear the program, I mean, I hear the man I talk about the, about the football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The football what, what would they say? Team them. What, would they, what would the African them who fight for struggle, what would they say? Them who live in now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, I say all them, all them, all them politicians are moved out there in Jamaica. I mean, I hear the man, I call them speech, the man. Whenever yeah. make, uh, make them speech, are they not them? They not them are the problem, or them not? That's the thing. And them lack of them knowledge, they move to them. Lack of them only know they tax people, you know. Mm-hmm. And I fight against reggae music and all them things. They make call a dance. A police are come lock down all dance and all them things. That they now make them speech a motor. Mm-hmm. They only are tearing with poor people more and more, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the struggle continue, you know. You know, so me glad, me, me, me glad when I live on the radio, I enlight people, you know, man. You're, you're the teacher, you know. Yeah. You know? I enlight people in this country, I make people know what I go on and everything, you know, man. Because right. them politicians, they knock a certain knowledge, and like them, I'm afraid to talk up certain things with them to talk up. No, but with them, I you talk up, and at them, I do the, at them, I oppress the people. Yeah, yeah, but, down, yeah, but what I say, them them now make all certain speech and all like that. Like what, like, like what you want them to say, like what you want them to say. Like what you want them to say. Like, 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 like,
Well. So, at the first time, this is not called us because a long time we want to talk to the ice cream about you, mm-hmm. you know? Then yeah, how come you do call? How come you do call? Eh? How oh, oh, come you do well, call? Well, so, so the working thing more time, you don't have to work and all them so things. So, you, you stop work, you know? You stop work? No, no, I work and come in still. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, give thanks, Bridget. Yeah, man, so respect, you know? Yeah. All right. Yes. 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 Muta, yes. Blessed man. Um, what is the special topic tonight, brother? No, no special topic no there. We did have play some tape. We did have play um, John Henry Clark. All right, me not enough credit. Me was just oh, I'm Christian. Me said, um, Christian. Me asked, yeah. yeah. Um, you heard about? That, you listen to me? Yeah, man. Me listen to you, man. All right. You heard about this phone from Adolf Hitler? That was in the museum for, for 1945. You heard anything about that? The, the, the what? Adolf Hitler phone. He Fu- didn't hear him breathe in it. You hear nothing no, about that? No, 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 no. Tell me about it. Good. I, I gave the um, BBC in here that did that year. Where, where, where about it, it? Where about the it phone? Was on, it was on um, CIA and some CIA business day. You know, yeah, um, but what about the music. phone with the engraved on it? What, 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 what? Uh, he still named the pony. So, so me, so somebody buy it, sell for three, um, three million dollar, US dollar. Oh, yeah? Something like that, and nobody no know, they no disclose who buy it. Okay. So me, I wonder if I, if I miss up Trump, buy it. Mr. Because I see him, my Hitler come again, you know. You might eat like again? Yeah. Okay. You can't talk about that, the credit done. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, all right, sir, all right. Yeah, yeah all right. The man say Hitler, what do you say? Trump got Hitler again, okay. Well, I trump up many things, boy. I mean, I tell you, if you want him to be all Satan, he will be Satan, too. He means many, 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 many things. Will you for people now? I try to figure him out. I don't try to figure him out. He means what he means. Believe you me. We're not a serious situation now, though. All right, so we will continue the music. Continue the music. A long time. I know you're from a bridge now. You're saying change him. Oh. <laughs> I have to pay call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Muta. Ah, blessed man, Dingo. Yeah, well, I'll go on. Yeah, man. Mm. You see, um, Jamaicans both here in Britain mm. and in Jamaica to an else, we are really feeling very, very upset and angry and bewildered also about the recent deportations of Jamaicans, you know, mm. that 8th of March flight and thing, yeah, yeah. and with more because it is seen by Jamaicans as Jamaicans being targeted by the British regime, you know, and especially because Jamaica has refused the kind of taking any money to build to, to build any prison, you know, I mean, the, the so-called gifts to ease the expenses, the financial expenses on the British government to, to have um, prisoners who have committed no offenses in Jamaica but in Britain, and because Jamaica, the Jamaican government has said no, that you know is a form of retaliation. You know, no, and but they will send they must hold on, hold on. The America ain't gonna send prisoners a long time still, you know. Send people yes, a long time. They, 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 they have been. I mean, for years, mm. for, for, for years. I mean, we, we know dep- deporting mm. deportations have been taking place and so on, but. Talking in this in this current time here, you know, especially with, with what is going on, you know, it's like a a, a renewed um, a renewed impetus, so to speak, you know, mm. Mm. And, and that type of thing. And this is making Jamaicans who came to this country, who from the came to this country, never travelled outside of Britain. Mm. Some of them don't even know where they are original passports are and a lot of them you know like that panicking 
because they want to make sure that they can show papers to show that they came to this country legally, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Because what, what, has, what has happened with some Jamaicans in the past is that they have gone to Jamaica on holiday, and when they want to return, mm. they find that they are refused entry because they don't have anything in their passport, the new passports that they have gotten yeah. to show that they have indefinite leave to remain or whatever, you know, yeah. that type of situation, you see. Well, and, and, we have to watch, we have to and, what did you say? No, I said, we have to go watch where I go on because America, they probably see him check too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same yeah. thing. So, it's, it's, it's a twin attack, a twin mm. offenses. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a twin offenses. And then, with a lot of these people have been deported, they have no supportive family structures in Jamaica, financially and otherwise. And I mean, this is something that they have known over the years, I mean, right there, quite a number of years ago, I know of a case in Central Kingston, and I want to big up my bridge with them in a Central Kingston, Evan, Kulu, Asim, and thing. But there was a bridge by the name of Danny, who used to live by Bridgeview, my bridge And he migrated with his wife and family. Mm-hmm. And years later, his son, who left Jamaica as a little youth, got into some legal problems in, in in the States, I think it was in New York City, and was deported. And the only person we had was his mother's mother, who herself was in no condition yeah. to take care of anyone, much less herself, you know, so never really had a place that she owned and that type of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And eventually, this youth tragically, you know, um, was shot and killed. Mm. Last you know, week, last by, week. By, by one of his former, um, a, a, a so called friend, a so called friend, yeah. you know. Last week, we did have a, 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 a Bridgman who worked with the program for, for rehabilitate um, the, 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 the deportees. The like. returnees, so to yeah, speak. They have a program where they have, where they kind of. You know, deal with quite a few of them get help from the program. As a matter of fact, I, I went to one of the meetings them up at the university where it was called by the same bridging and it seemed to be a program, but I don't know how far it go. Because I still see a whole heap of man on the road where, where I know a deportee because deportee show me them. You know, come in the portee and deportee say, Why well, the bridging there the portee, you know, are you know, them, them used to sell drugs in a Brooklyn or something. Like. So, it's a whole heap of them up on the road. We don't get reality. But I, I guess, you know, it, it a comes on three farm few roads, I know that. Yes, it, yes, it's coming it, fast, very fast and few roads. You take five, you see 20 you know? come. You take up 20, you see 50 come. You know, them really. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know. And, and, and you see, what, what people must realize is that there was a time in Jamaica's history when the the, the the safety valve, so to speak, because, you know, whenever you're in a country and you can't provide employment or proper employment mm. for for the people who are, you, you, you know, born and growing up and that type of thing, mm. if, if you can't cater, then you're going to be having a lot of social problems, violence and otherwise yeah. and things, because people have to survive by any means necessary. Mm-hmm. What used to be the safety valve is when people could go to Britain, could go to the America, United yeah. States, and could go to Canada too. Yeah. But from Britain started to cut back yeah. both the Labour government and the Tories, mm-hmm. you know, with them racist immigration laws and yeah. that type of thing. The safety valve. Yes, the safety valve. So that people could leave Jamaica and, you, 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 you know, and, and that would help to ease the pressure. The safety valve is no longer there. Mm. And and this is this is one of the main reasons why you have so much 
problems in Jamaica economically, which ties into violence and things, because the way things are in Jamaica economically over the years is that you do have the job opportunities and the educational opportunities to, to sustain the growing population. Yeah, but what you know, as, as seems like they take me up on the radio as so a regular now. If me never yeah. did I got Africa regular, me, me, me would have broke like dog, you know. Exactly. Af- Af- Africa is so still near right now, you know. And tell me, you know, yeah, because if me never have Africa, Africa, me, me they are so now, I read for me so now. Me they are so, you yeah. know why me they are so, me they are so become a feast and me have a work for do, which is that, which is where me are there so now. But in terms of <laughs> my way of life, how me want to live, this couldn't sustain me, man. No, you know, uh, uh, brother, brother Buta, you and, you and I, and others who are listening, who, 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 who know the runnings, no, it's true, yeah. because what you're doing at IRFM, dear, mm. is, is a labor of love. Yeah, man, it could not love. sustain you no, to the abilities that you have yes. and what oh, you no, want I to live. achieve in yeah, life yeah, and to maintain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, the... the, 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 the the, the work at IRSM, which of course is, is all important, we know, but we're dealing yeah. in terms of the strict economics. Finance, finance, not, finance. Hold and sustain Yeah, you. man, I forgot the alternative. America need me to say, you know, Africa, you know, because at this it's time, Africa, you get yes. most of my work. At this moment yes. in time, it's outside of America, I get most of my work. So, you know, they made it. It's a weird thing. Pardon the pun. Pardon the pun. You know, sometimes. Part of the safety valve these people doing farm work yeah. in Canada and in the States. Mm. Is pardon the pun because you know it's it's joke me. Mm. It's like you do the farm work in Mother Africa. Yeah, yeah, of course I try do. Because what you know. Yes. When you really look on it now, you know. Me feel like say me supposed to can't do certain things. You understand? Me and you don't say family. you know what they say, me and you don't talk about your children. Yeah. You only talk about yourself as an individual, you know. I'm a wife. Remember, you have children, you know, and your wife, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when me have to know, me give thanks to me, could have the evil, I'll split up myself from journalism to poet <laughs> and talker. Yeah, because you, because you have had to, you have had to, what we call a Jamaica, kind you know, of the roots language, and the language. Yeah. You have to move all far. Yeah, I all forgot them, man. I forgot them, Reggie. So you cannot imagine. Yes, you have to reverse a time. So you cannot imagine. All far to survive. So you cannot imagine people. I mean, I'm a Yeah. Yeah, you cannot imagine people who don't have that ability. To and, reverse a time. And need. In the marketplace. Where they're where, where going to turn to, where the mind they are, where they're thinking gone. All right, well, right now. In terms of versatility. Never brethren originally from Smith Lee and Central Kingston, bigger. Mm. The t- master tailor, young tailor, where growing up as a youth, his desire is to be a tailor. Now we know at one time in Jamaica to be a dressmaker, mm. to be a tailor, mm. is a big thing because yeah, people man. used to make good living from that. Yeah. But over the years, as we know, mo- most people... Them just buy ready-made clothes. China clothes, tailors, the Chinese. And you don't ever hear about dressmaker again. And tailors no, is just like, you know, no. about school time. is altering and them type of thing. They, people have to go into other professions. Neither shoemaker, so yeah, they about shoemaker. Bigger is now the football coach. He used to coach Kingston Technical High School. I think he still do it too. And he was the coach for Central Kingston, Kingston Central, football mm. coach and thing. If my brethren bigger never burst a Thailand thing mm. to, 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 to become a football coach. But that was not how he started. He didn't love football as a youth and, you know, yeah, as a youth who grew in a man and know. thing. But suppose him never burst a Thailand. Yeah. Taylor, he become eh? absolute, you know. Eh? But he don't need Taylor to tell him because people are wearing all denim tear up the denim and all them. Eh, exactly, man, tear up thing. Why, so, why so, do you make it weird? Taylor not even weird. needed to patch nothing no, because yeah, the style is severe, tear, tear up the jeans. From so, it, it, so. better, it better not even tear. A joke yes. business, a joke business, Rasta, a joke. It, yeah, reason. madness, yeah. madness. European madness. domination, European domination creates some little zombies. Zombies, we turn zombies to Europe, you know them really. 
<coughs> yeah, yeah, man. Those of our people who don't have no consciousness of themselves as Africans to so be proud and to know, say, as Marcus Garvey said, that we must do things for ourselves. And as Marcus Garvey said, if you can get a job, you have to go create one and thing. It's, 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 it's reality, yeah. you know? And, and, and I remember Marcus Garvey Jr. saying at Kingston Technical in the 60s, you know, saying to me and others that um, one of the reasons why the, 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 the so-called but not so called the rich exploiters in Jamaica fight against um Africans mm. going to Africa from Jamaica is that it would lessen the it, 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 what it would do is that they would have to pay their so called uh, domestics the helpers yeah. more money because you know you you, you know the, the, the less people you have to be your helpers, you have to fear more. So, mm-hmm. so he was saying that if m- more of our people were able to go abroad, then the pool of helpers that mm-hmm. them get from would be lessened. So those wages would automatically go up. So it also come to a selfish thing too that they would have to be doing their own yeah. domestic chores yeah. instead of having people as yard boy or yard, yard girl, girl and you, yeah. you know the type of thing and yeah. sexual abuse that come with that and that type of situation you know yeah. story come to bump you know mm-hmm. story come to bump you know so those of them who fight against marcus garvey and mother africa and some of them are weird locks and i pretend mm-hmm. because you cannot be a rasta and be against marcus garvey because to do that, that means you're a wolf in sheep clothing. You're not a rasta, no, you're, you're a rasta. Reggie, you give the, you know, the wolf good name, you know, rasta. You give the wolf good name, right? I told me I give <laughs> the wolf good name, I told you. Because I read and told you the wolf do have no name. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf don't even have no name. Nobody worse than Wolf in that sheep yeah, man. Worse. <laughs> not even worse. Worse are rat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. You know? Yes, my brother. So, you know, we, we just have to do what we have to do. And yeah. we just give, to, me, me just wish myself happy birthday, Earth Strong, this Saturday, the 18th of March. Yeah, 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 wish yourself happy birthday. You know, he's... Yes, man. <laughs> baby, motor. I mean, uh, we have nobody wish me happy Earth Strong, right, you know. Right. Me, I wish myself, you know. I should be never do a Earth Strong and would have said still. <laughs> all right. But me know, but me know, so the sentiments that I like all, you all know, right, that's sir. still. Yeah, yeah man. man. Earth Strong, Saturday, I'm a daughter on the 19th of March. To give thanks for my brother. daughter. Was Sunday gone. My daughter was Sunday gone. Sunday gone? All right. Yes. Happy, happy, happy belated Earth Strong to her, mm. too, because we remember the, the, the two daughters then. You know me, yeah. you know me, know that. You know what yeah, I mean? One of December, yeah. And, yes, yes. The right, real, and we know it. yours in a December day, when we did wish the eye, yeah. them time. They bought Muta more than ever, African people worldwide, because Jamaica is just a sample. Yeah. We have to do you what never we hear, have to do. You never hear the team from a play a while ago with John Henry Clark? Oh, you know, no, I okay. did not. But it, it just what was that topic about? Because John Henry Clark was a man who I knew just like who I knew Dr. Ben, my good friend. Yeah, what what, what Janine, was the topic? No, him did not talk about African spirituality and how we make Judaism, Islam, and Christianity usurp the whole African spirituality and make us feel like say, that is the beginning of the thing. Precisely, precisely. You, you, you know, you know. I was watching a thing on social media um, with the skin bleaching business there in Jamaica mm-hmm. and elsewhere. But it was featured in Jamaica and some ignorant, miseducated youths that are about how them, them want to bleach and look white because to be black, ugly, because black like tar, ugly and that type of thing. So I sent it to a sister of mine who... She's a Christian. I mm. um, say, you see what self-hatred cause with the European. I mean, you know, you see the kind of self-hatred, you know. Mm. I never say where it coming from. Mm. You know, she texts me back and say, is black people fault why them I hate themselves? Mm. So I had to text her and say, listen, no African people never used to hear them complexion and them hear. African people used to love them complexion, dark complexion and here and thing. It's European races who come and indoctrinate that and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So don't blame the victims and thing. You see, from me saying that 
she don't answer me, you know, because she's so much in the Christian thing, because part of my answer to her was, this is why, under the Christian thing, a vex, a vex, you know, mm. that you know, worshiping a blonde, blue-eyed guy, Jesus Christ, mm. as God, and things, so what you expect? Mm. So no wonder the people misguided and things. So you yeah. see, because the truth hurt, I don't want to hear from her. Well, you still hear from her, man. We're going to move. We're going to move. Yes. Bless so it. give thanks and strong up every time because our work, what we have to do as Africans in, yeah. the, in, in, in the realms of Marcus, what's that? Yeah. yeah. Walk up your waist and glow, glow, glow. Walk up your waist and glow, glow. Mota. You're blessed. Blessed, man. I did. Mota, I know, I did, man. The business needs some more, some more. Conscious African producer and a motor, I push out for my conscious African music and more in a motor. Because I know I don't make it too much of it. Which eh? business is that one? Re- mu- reggae music business okay. motor. Too much I produce them, I produce too much I too much I bleach in tune them and them and them. Nah, push the African tune and motor, you see me? Now, well, if I, I don't make them do, you're you not listening to the right. You're, 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 them the more, them I know, more I know, more I know, which producer motor I make them kind of music eh? What do you mean, Mr. Yeah. Kupuza? You know, you're... Um, Kabaka Pyramid and Chronics and Kelly's... Yeah, man, I hear them. I don't know what producing music, Mota. Oh, the producer... They're not producer do it, man. Yeah, but... Uh, me so what you want to know, know the producer for? You want to record some? Yeah, me have some conscious music, Mota. They don't record it yourself, man. Ideas, they don't record conscious. it yourself, man. Eh? Record it yourself, man. Record it myself. Yeah, you sound like you have enough money, man. Me, no, me, me, no, me not have enough money, motor, but me. But you have, have enough to record it yourself. You have enough to record it yourself. Yeah, man, me have enough to record it myself. Yeah, but what the rhythm, motor, we need some rhythm. You need some rhythm? Yeah, man, we need some rhythm. We have, have a lyric. Then you know, get some musician and make you make rhythm. I get one you to. See, I catch flow about the place I know the day. Them. You can't call for catch flow and make him do it. And pay my money. Yeah, man, I can pay my money. You know who them cash flow? You know who them cash flow? Yeah, man, I love them really. Yeah, man, I love them really, man. Neil, really, they really. don't just call him, man, and make him and set up a time and go to the studio. And Neil, I think. Yeah, man, I write things. I motor. call I'm say, him or something. Mota, I have to say a period song to my nigga. You know, I'm going to call and talk some conscious thing all the way. So a period song to him, you know? Yeah, all right, sir. Yeah, man. Blessed. Blessed Mota. Yes. One just yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, let's say it, my love. Yeah, let's say it. Yeah, man. Um, you know, when just like a refer, just something with that thing about my ear, the next elder, Carl, and I talk about the bleach on him. Mm. Um, you know, as a as a youth, um, I find it weird, say, looking back in our history, um, people never really take the time to appreciate the genius in a, the black people them developing bleaching bleaching capacities. Um, for me, even though I find it negative, I also believe say, what I say happen with bleaching or what I've seen is that amongst black people is that they people them discover some chemical things where is on a scientific level where Europeans, you know, wherever them live in the world, have to use Wolipa technology. Wolipa. No, money. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The bleaching, mm-hmm. when they use, I know, I know black people make them bleaching. No, yeah, I know that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that Mm. The people them discover for use things when I make for bleaching, right? Mm. Them find out how to make it change them skin. Now, me I say these people, a lot of the people who practice bleaching mm. come from communities mm. or you know, impoverished backgrounds when I necessarily yeah. provide for educational capacities for learning chemistry, them weird. You know what I mean, I say? So I think when the people them like what them use so where, 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 like what like what um you know I no, can't tell you exactly like toothpaste like toothpaste tooth like tooth, 
Yeah. yeah but people don't know that already from toothpaste. I, know, I mean, I know, people don't know the toothpaste like why yeah, they teeth. Yeah, my elder, but what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying. No, me hear what I say. Yeah, say so them fine and ingenious way to make bleach outside of the bleach with them buy. May I say that there is something inherently um, genius within the African experience that is coming out in the people's bleaching. What is genius about that? What genius about creating something from bleach? I the mean, idea, the things around chemistry. There's something what the people them discover about what them doing in terms of how them can change them skin color. But that, that, what, where, where, where you get that from, Virgin? Where you get that from? It's not um, it's, it's, it's just observation and looking back from the history. Like the, for instance, for instance, yeah. the, the name Egypt, which you know that's the um, the more anglophonic name mm. um, come from which you know we have the Kemetic or the Kemet whatever yeah, Kemet. The prana- yes the word alchemy originated from the Egyptians them and all of them things you know the history of my elder. Yeah. so what I'm saying is that the idea of the alchemy which is the chemistry there is something if you know if we know how the Africans them migrate populate the place then them come over Yasser through them forced enslavement these people in their in their levels responding to them <clears throat> responding to them society has you know them drop on something genius in you know, them chemistry them knowledge about chemistry which I think we need to look into more why may I go say that I once saw a study from a university in Tokyo where these bridgings, these Japanese bridgings, were developing melanin-powered battery pacemakers, mm. where people who have pacemakers known at them heart actually have them being powered by melanin-oriented power sources. Yeah, let me ask now, you a question. If, hold on, hold on. Last week, right? Yeah. You go check out where did that talk about, about the music? No, no. So why you never you know, tell you to you know, check it out and, 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 and come back and tell you? You're going for another theoretical thing again. Why, no, why you, you never, never check out? No, we you man. know, I've never spoke. I don't, you know, you know what I talk to you. Know oh, I know you talked talk to me last week about, about the no. music. Okay. No. Okay. No. No, no. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, no. You know who I talk to, but you don't know who. Me call you on the weekend and make you know. Me know who, but, me know who. <laughs> <laughs> just cool, man. But what I say, what I just say still, is that whereas one set of people have studied the use of melanin, yeah. the African in a retrogressive step have discovered how to erase the melanin through him own genius. And me think... One of the things them we have always been doing, like our politician bash dance hall, I so, know so, no so, so if a man find a way, if a man find a way to chop off his foot without it hurt him, no, is is a genius that? No, no, that's not what me look. That's not what me look for. No, you say him find a way to make a chemical to bleach out his skin. That means he's a genius. No, no, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's but a genius. I, no, no, mother. Then no, that you say, man, you say, is a genius who figure out, say, him can mix up two little thing and whiten up mm. his body and make him skin get white. That means him is a genius. No, 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 no. There's something genius inherent in that what we need for tap in. What, what, in in, what, what, what we need for tap in? Maybe, into? maybe, maybe, like we are doing now, in terms of pointing out certain Afrocentric. No, hold on, ideas. hold on, hold on, hold on. Because my brain is so clicking, you know. You have to tell me what you are saying. You are saying yeah. that, all right, first of all, the bleach, you don't bleach them skin with, I know they make it. That's the first thing. True. Right? All right. So now, a man use toothpaste, which is not to make it neither. True. And then put it on them skin, for bleach them skin. What is yes. the chemical that them come up with now for mix up? No, them don't come up with the chemical. What they come up with the mixture. Which mixture? The, the, which mixture? Whatever, whichever combination of chemicals are But I know them come up with it, brethren. I know black people come up with it. No, black people never come up with the with the with the with the the, mixture. the, the, the product 
but them come up with a mixture. But I know them come up with it. I don't mean I try to show you. I know black people come up with a mixture for, for bleach. No. <laughs> what what them come up with? Them not come them up. Them come up with the madness. We use the white. We use China people chemical and people who oh, white people chemical and put on them skin for bleach it. Yeah, that is where they come up with. So can, can I ask you a question? My yeah, elder? yeah. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think that white people know how to make things to blacken them skin? White people set up that the sun and blacken them skin. Them also make machines to blacken them skin. Yeah, but Matthew, let's say, the chemical where the white black people are used, I know black people make it. Yeah, but what I'm, uh, what I'm saying to you is also that the, the, the chemicals that the people have mm-hmm. gotten together for make the, it's for not, make the yeah, for make the bleaching is not designed for bleaching. There's something else, so so there must be something else. What people? What you are saying? Black people come up with it. Them genius enough to come up with it. Them come up with the mixture. But it's them not black people with... mix it. It's not black people mix it. Okay. I it's know not... black people mix it. No, black people don't mix the the, the, the thing for make the toothpaste. No, the, 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 the bleach. The... the bleach matter about the bleaching. The bleach. The bleach yeah, yeah. itself on the road and all them things. I know black people come up with it. No, but there are mixtures. That's what I'm telling you. There the are mixture. mixtures that people use for bleach them skin. Like which it's bleach? Not... Like which mixture? Which mixture? Them have mixtures like um like with the toothpaste and a variety yeah. of things. Where me, me, me can't tell you the name of them, but yeah. I've seen Like it beer gun and them something there. You mix beer gun with, with, with what? Sulfur. I, I can't tell you the name, but yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. I've I've seen it. They view them do it. So it's not. No, I don't tell them not do it, you know. I don't tell them not do it, you know. But yeah, say that genius come up with that. No, but no, I'm not saying so that. A man, if a genius. man, if a man, if a man come up with an idea to chop off him foot without it hurt him, he's a genius. No, my elder. What do you mean no? What do you mean not, no? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I know I said that. Where I say? Where I say? Is that we must study that? Why we must study the the the, 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 the genius? Of black people who could have really put chemicals together for bleach out them skin? No, maybe we need to look into the another levels of the people them. You see, which African level? Tell me which level. The level of what? The people them. It's a mind. Bridget, it's a mindset. I gonna make you. Yeah, make we know. You know. I know. It's a mindset. Yeah. So the, if the mindset make you make a bleach for bleach your skin, we must study. We must study now the mindset will make the bleach in order to come up with something else. My elder. Yes, sir. Muta, yeah, minia, muta, yeah. muta. I'm All muta, right. here, man. All right, muta. Yeah. yeah. Why, why, why the people them, why the people them are, are, are bleach, muta? The people them are bleach come only for different conditions, especially in a depressed area. Them feet say, them skin too black, and them feet say, them get lighter, them feel more comfortable because of how it was projected to them. Through history and through time, lighter your skin is is the more opportunity you're going to have. And uh, you, 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 you were more accepted with your peers than because your skin light. So them just do that. All right. And it's mostly people, uneducated, depraved people do it. That, but that, it's not that, educated people. That's do exactly, it. That is exactly what I try. I yeah, like so what I say, but it's not them make it, it's not them mix it up to do it. And uh, even uh, if they mix it up for do it, uh, and even if you follow your thing and say, it's them mix it for do it. They mix it for bleach them skin. Which means no, say, most of the bleach is not them mix it. All right, so I could say them mix it for bleach them skin now. You have to tell me now, say, it's most a genius mind come up with mixing no, it for bleach them skin. No, that's not what I say. Where you say, come in and understand what you say. You say, I see my brain snow right now, I'm too attack a man in here. No. Where you say, where you say, where you say. Tell me again where you are say, where you really are May say. I say yeah. that there is something inherently genius about the people them have where we need to tap into. Like into what, what, area. what, what is the ingenious thing that we need to tap into? M phone gone, M phone gone. Fuck say. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah, but them not, but watch out. I can work, I can, and people sit down and find a whole heap of different things. And so some people sit down and kill, and some people sit down and, and develop something for bleach them skin. And some people sit down and figure out how to scam somebody. Well, that's another level of genius, too. Yeah, so it's a genius that almost 
we must continue the process then. I'm figuring it out. No, no, my elder. But, 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 but if you're going to tap into me, if, if you're going to tap into me, if you're going to tap into something, you know, you're going you're gonna to tap into the something to find out something have, about the, 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 yeah, the, the we relationship. Yeah, we continue the reason another time. All right. Listen. Yeah. Listen. All right. So you are saying now, strange face coming in again, you know, for me, you know. <laughs> what? What? Let them tell me say you're coming now. You know them down. Them down going to do that. Let them tell me say you're coming. Where are my tricks there? Look, I give up some tricks to do. Them was a man in there? <laughs> All right, man. like me, sometimes we have to bother things we deal with. Yeah, yeah. Concrete as well coming out. Yeah. I understand what the youth are saying, you know. Yep, yeah. But it's not something you want to entertain. Right. You know, you, you understand what I'm saying? Say, boy, a man just sit down and just come up with a mixture of just white up his skin, them way there. He must be a genius. Yeah. I mean, I understand what I'm saying. You know. It's not like I don't understand it, but I say, no. I don't want to entertain that. That's like me entertain alkaline music on the radio, you know, I, you know, final justification. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah, you know. Five Scottel is a genius, you know, because you come up with the nastiness. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. wow, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right, one little card, you know. Nobody take a long time, you know. Yes, EL. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, dude. What me I deal with? You can't be talking yeah. like a man as what me I deal with. <laughs> How are the mad man you rust like? You can't be talking like a man as what me I deal with. Yeah, but no, you can't be talking like a man as what me I deal with. Mother. Where you deal with? Yo, I was my last time as a fool. I was my last time as a fool. I'm not talking no foolishness. I'm not talking no foolishness, you know. Don't feel like I'm talking foolishness. I understand what I'm saying. I understand what I'm saying. But it's not something I want to entertain. All right. Yeah, so where you are saying now? Where you are saying now? Where you are saying? The top of where him did that say? Where you are saying? You're not saying nothing. I said, I like your program. Okay, give thanks. I'm going to end thing. All right, sir. Yeah, I'm proper. So you know, can't drop some money around us and sponsor something on it. We are not sponsors, you know. We are not sponsors. Jesus Christ, have nothing to do with it. I'm not going to say something. You know, I'm listening to Rizzo. Bring some nether soul and some, some weight named around here. Eh? Some, some, some Shira. Who has some Shira around here? Yeah. If you, if you bring Shira, give me make your children and here's the $3 and change it for you. Jesus. <laughs> hey. If I love Jesus. Yo, me like like you All right, me gone, do. Me gone. Me can't two o'clock now. Me gone. All right, remember? Yeah. Yeah, me that's about the youth, I you know. You see? It's like me hear them things that me hear when the youth I say, and me hear when I say, say, you have to have some kind of ingenuity about you. Mm -hmm. For really sit down and con con make a concussion where would that make your skin become that way. Mm -hmm. But the genius side is that me, me hear them things that with man who are singing nastiness and when construct yeah. the, the, the song. But I must be a genius for construct that, you know. But me don't really want to entertain that construction and as a genius, you know. Like a man can't find genius in this in a whole heap of things, you know. You find genius in a many things. Our genius, anything negative, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, I entertain that yeah. genius. You don't want to investigate that genius. And and to me, no, the most side is not our of our making. Yeah. You don't want to know, say. If you mix up, yeah, because you use other products. Where, where man make yeah, up. yeah. If you if you if you if you mix up spit, <laughs> if you mix up cold dung and spit, mm. maybe you can get a nice complexion too. Right. Me no know, but me can experiment with it tomorrow morning. With, with little manure. <laughs> yeah, you know, really. Yeah, you know. Anyway, we entertain everything by this program, yeah. So here I know, we give thanks to the moment, give thanks to the time, give thanks to the energy of uh, who outside us. So. We shall operate out there. We can't, we don't even know how we shall operate out yeah, there. Yeah, one, one, one of the new ones. <laughs> they just call her one of the new ones. That's not like a show I keep on them say, featuring being the man, yeah. bounty killer, and many more. Yeah, many more. That many more is a group. Yeah, well, we don't, we don't <laughs> That's very embarrassing. Yeah, we don't 
I should have said, you're never going to get a cock side here. Go outside the cock side right here, Bridget. Go outside the cock side right here. Go outside the cock side here. Bridget, go outside the cock side here, Mr. Rasta. I hear a time, man. Bridget. I three minutes left for the program, and just walk go there last time with the last time with him. Why are you embarrassed? Watch him now, nah, go, you know. I mean, don't remember for him name. I nah, remember him name, you know. You think me, I remember him name. I nah, remember him name, Rasta. We give thanks to the moment and the time and the energy. I like a one call there still, you know, I could sneak it in, yes. That's um, Yes, EL. I'm EL. EL, quick. Oh, oh, Manchester, I have a one-year program. Ah, you're not saying nothing, man. You're not saying nothing. I give you time to talk, you know, you're Manchester, Manchester, man. So you want to know, little more from 2 to 545, the stepping razor, the art of war, and we give thanks. I go on, I go on, you know, we not introduce no one. Because the man can't go, 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 go tell me the data name out there, you know, Rasta. Yeah. Come down with this road, I have to say it's one of the new ones, them like it's an it's a new name. But, but you can't tell me that. Me can't. Me, me don't know her name. Me don't know her road there. No, but me don't know her road there, you know. Oh, yeah. She don't come in here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see her. Yeah, but I tell me to go out. Let me tell me the name. Let me tell the people, them say, we want to thank the lady. Thank her. <laughs> see, they don't call her call long. I'm going to go, go do that. Let me check in the next call there, then. All right. Yeah. 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 But a national thing for find out the operator name. You can't believe that. We're going to make it a national issue. <laughs> yeah, did. You don't know, find it out yet. You don't know, find it out yet. Watch your man. But me play the show, you'll find it. See there. Shani, come here, Shani. Come here, Shani. Come here, come here, come here. Shani, the, f- the second time you see you, you know. You know what I mean? I call you the new one. My name is Shani. Yeah, he must say, I want the new one, them. Yeah, me no. Remind me. You can't remind me. <laughs> no, because I never see her. Oh, yeah, you did say that. You did say that. I never see her, you know. I just don't see her operator. I never see who, which one, whatever. Right? Yeah. He must call you the the one, one, one of the new one, one them. <laughs> right, yeah. Tell me your name again here, mama. Shanik. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to forget it. I'll ask you next week again. Shavani, 